Welcome to News Click. Today's big sporting story of the day is, of course, Elliot Kipchoge, the Kenyan runner, the 34 year old Kenyan marathon runner, who has for the first time broken the two hour mark for the marathon. One hour, 59 minutes, and 40 seconds is what Kipchoge took to complete the, uh, the marathon course in Vienna this morning. And it's perhaps not difficult to find uh, all kinds of critiques and detractors and all kinds of ifs and buts in this situation. Uh, what our attempt today, and I'm joined by Leslie Xavier to discuss this, is to uh, firstly react immediately to what's happened. Uh, it's, it's a moment that will perhaps redefine uh, athletics for generations to come, whichever side of the fence you sit on. And so, so immediate uh, sort of reactions. Leslie, we were watching the last few yeah. minutes of, of that uh, of that two hour sub two hour Sprint. race, and you can yeah. help but smile, man. Irrespective of what you sort of feel about the endeavor or, or all of that, and we'll get into some of that. But you couldn't help smiling in the last 500 meters when he sort of brushed aside the pacemakers and just went for that sprint. I don't know if it was a smile actually, and it's uh, I mean it might sound as an exaggeration, but I haven't felt that kind of emotions in a sporting achievement for a long while now. It was momentous, you know that barrier is there. It's it's a, it's a, it, the the sheer human endeavor the the physical exertion that is involved, the mental battle that is involved, all these things. Yeah, it is. there is a lot of technology involved around him. There is a lot of manipulation involved around this. Manipulation, in, not in the negative way. But the point is that he ran that race and what beautifully he ran. The strides, except for the last 300 meters when, he's, when he did the sprint. And then you could understand that there is a human running that. Otherwise, it was a well-oiled machine. Uh, you can see that not even a single ounce of muscle is moving out of place. It's all synchronized, beautiful stride, completely focused. And then that moment, I mean, it's 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 goosebumps actually because it's you know that it's now marathons won't be the same. And Kipchoge himself, just after the race, he said that it's not just me. Me now, many would break this barrier, just like Roger Bannister's mile barrier, and after that. The yeah, so in that sense, that's why I guess so much euphoria, so much uh, usage of the word historic moment yeah. uh, in all of this because it was 1954 when Bannister broke the four-minute mm -hmm. barrier yeah. on the mile. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, of course, uh, perhaps it's a matter of time still before uh, someone breaks the nine-second barrier in the 100-meter sprint. Yeah, there's but, a lot of time for that. Yeah. Yeah, but you never know. But the two-hour mark in, in the marathon has been something that people have yeah. been going after. And, and uh, Kipchoge is one of the guys who's come close to it in the past as well. Mm -hmm. Having done it now, in uh, just to quickly recap, this is not an official race. Yeah. Not an it official was, record either. Yeah, and not an official record either. Uh, it was essentially a, an event designed to, from the point of view of the organizers of the event, to go into, uh, to show that human limitations can be redefined or humans have no limitations. Yeah. Like like it says on uh, on one of the screens up top here. Yeah. You know. And Kipchoge, of course, said the same, that uh, that he believes that human beings have no limits and, and can push beyond these uh, kind of barriers. So, talk to us a little bit about the sort of military levels of preparation and organization that went into this race. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, precise to the point of milliseconds, I guess, because they had set a pace and they had gotten the best runners of the generation to be pacers and 41 of the best in the world were pacing in in seven member i mean seven teams uh, who were surrounding kipchoge when he was running making a phalanx basically a v shape in front of him so that there is a aerodynamic uh, aerofoil kind of, I mean, it's like it's yeah, slipstream. Minimum yeah, resistance. Yeah, minimal resistance. So, yeah. creating a slipstream for me. And this actually takes to the main company which was uh, sponsoring this event. It's a pharmaceutical company, Ineos. Ineos owns a uh, Tour de France cycling team. In fact, they, they, their team won this year's Tour de France as well as last year's. So, they... It used to be Team Sky. Sky team Sky earlier. Which is now Team yeah, yeah. So, uh, 
they must have you i mean they they have used their extensive knowledge of formations while cycling to cut through air and they have used running dynamics into it used that science used uh, body physiology all these things they used metrology because they wanted to ensure that the optimum conditions are there on the given day mm. that's why we never was chosen two factors for that one is the weather the course which was a 9.4 km loop mm -hmm. almost straight with two two roundabouts at the so end so flat and straight flat and straight and uh, no uh, this thing uh, no wind at all but still they ensure that wind is not a factor by creating that that bubble around bubble that around actually. him it's, it uh, was like a presidential on on uh, envoy yeah. type yeah. and that actually robbed spectators of watching kipchoge in his beautiful stride yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it it is a sight to be all yeah. but otherwise yeah getting back to the science part of it then there were two cars one a pacing car one in the front and one at the back and the front car was actually pointing a laser a green laser grid in front of the pacers and they had to match that grid to ensure that they were within the target was uh, 1 hour 15 uh, 1 hour 59 minutes and 50 seconds so they were and uh, kipchoge finished in 40.2 seconds so 10 seconds within that time and said so there were always 10 seconds so the timing involved was it's a, a per kilometer break if you uh, break up if you look at it every kilometer he ran between 2 minute 48 seconds and 2 minute 52, 52 seconds, seconds. Mm -hmm. so it's it was that precise and most of it was 2 minute 50 50, 50, 50. <laughs> it was it, it, it was that precise he prepared for it for 4 months obviously many runners who came they were part of the world championship that concluded last week so they were all excited to be part of it and of an history uh, of the historic moment but uh, the thing is that this entire manipulation it's been a lot of critics have been out there they have been saying that it's 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 technological do doping in a way but then no one claimed that it is a clean record run this was meant for kipchoge to show what he is capable of as an athlete and also show beyond any doubt that human spirit and human athletic endeavor is is something that can break any barriers it's it, it takes systematic approach it takes steps but it can be broken mm. that's the, that's the whole idea of this exercise now this re uh, reading also now it it is of course marathon season in a way and Uh, at yeah, the upcoming in Sh Chicago Marathon, I think uh, the odds are in favor of the women's marathon record being mm. broken. In fact, uh, this year, perhaps with Kipchoge having just done this, and with the Olympics next year, maybe he'll decide to focus on that Olympic gold, gold medal. And yeah. Tokyo probably will not be ideal uh, in terms of uh, doing this as an official race mm -hmm. and as a record, but. Do you see that record very soon uh, being seriously challenged? A uh, barrier. Uh, Kipchoge himself owns the record. In fact, it's uh, it's uh, two hours one minute and thirty nine seconds. So this record was broken last year in Berlin. Berlin is an ideal course for breaking records. Flat and weather is uh, conducive, and the uh, most of the record attempts happen over there. Kipcho. Uh, this happened a year after Kipchoge's first attempt at the. two hour barrier and he fell short of that for uh, 26 seconds short of that he finished in 2 uh, hours 24 25 seconds so but the point was that when he was running that two hour barrier targeting that two hour barrier in 2017 he didn't know what he was getting into it was an unknown element but when he touched very that close to two hour he knew what he is capable of physically and a year later he, bro he broke his own record by more than 2 2 uh, minutes mm. so that is the kind of thing that uh, people are talking about now even he himself is talking about now i know he in fact pointed out that now everybody knows that this is possible but the important fact is that by far he is the best athlete uh, marathon runner for of the generation he has dominated it for the last 6 years the entire field He has won almost all the city marathons across the world, all the elite marathons that mm. need, needs to be won, and so he would obviously now know that he can touch officially 
two hours. So if not an official tour, breaking barrier, official record, he would come very close to that in the next two, three years, which would be his, his period now. Yeah. After that, he will obviously fade, age will catch up. Mm -hmm. So uh, Tokyo, uh, it's, it's not an ideal city for, for a record. But it would be a great city to have that record because of the Japanese running culture that yeah. is there everywhere. Yeah. It's a huge marathon culture. <coughs> but uh, I don't think Olympic Games would be that occasion. Maybe 2020 would be skipped, maybe 2021 Berlin. But yeah, this uh, to our barrier, there is a chance that in the next five, six years, uh, it, it would be broken officially. I think like everyone would agree more or less that running, marathons running especially will, will not be the same again. <laughs> and you touched a little bit on the uh, sort of mental aspect of it, knowing that he can do it and how mm. that will perhaps spur him on to try at least this sort of stuff in the future and, and other athletes. Yeah. Uh, I was reading uh, <coughs> Elliot talking about coming into this race. Firstly, it was only four months of mm -hmm. actual preparation yeah. that went in, which is remarkable. At the end of the race, we were commenting and I think everyone else was as well. That he looked like he'd just, you know, gone for a walk in the yeah. park or to pick up the newspaper. And, <laughs> and he was just that's it. Uh, So that's the physical part. But the mental part that he was saying was that yesterday or yeah. the day before the actual event was for him the, the toughest day of his life because everyone from the Kenyan president to all kinds of uh, high profile celebrities were Wishing calling him, him yeah. and spurring him on. And then the three or so hours between his wake up time at whatever 5.30 in the yeah. morning and, and, and 8.15 when he started the run was again you saying that like that's the hardest part and then when you get on to the track then all everything else takes over and then you're just doing what you're good at doing. Yeah, so uh, again, so there is a lot of stake because he has failed at this attempt previously and he also knows that there is a small window for him now, age-wise, peak-wise, prime-wise. And being an elite athlete, you are, I mean, he is considered the Roger Federer of marathon running or the Muhammad Ali of mar marathon running. In fact, Muhammad Ali would be apt because he wants to go beyond the sport as well, do things beyond that probably. And there, there I have been reading about him, there have been interviews in which he has, he has said that he needs to do this or he needs to conquer all that is there to conquer in marathon so that he can actually go beyond the sport and do things which are meaningful. And this obviously has a meaning. So. Uh, this this barrier breaking of the barrier obviously has a meaning also uh, uh, in that regard because it it's 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 about human abilities. But when that kind of a pressure is there on yourself, uh, you, obviously there will be goosebumps. And then the added part that it's all it's all scheduled. It's 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 in a way mechanical in a way. There's no reactionary. You are not racing any any anyone again anything. Again against any other racer. There is a clock, you're racing against the clock. There is a set pace, set rhythm to his, this thing. It's all, it's all precise. So getting that, I'm sure it would have helped because then the athlete switches his mind to the me mechanical part of it where he has trained so much that he has to, he knows, he knows the steps, he, he, he knows the nutrition in, that is needed, yeah. everything. So that, I, I'm sure being an elite athlete, I'm sure being the world champion that he is, he would have coped with that kind of a goose, um, I mean, that kind of butterflies in his stomach and all that by getting into the preparation mode where he gets into the zone. And what, by God, what zone he was in because he got in and he just, like you said, he, we go to go and pick up the newspaper, we pant. <laughs> so, and I was thinking that I, I do a bit of cycling around for fun here. And if I was pacing him on my cycle, I would have struggled to, I would, he would have killed me because I would have, failed him <laughs> in the world record <laughs> attempt. So, yeah, yeah that's, the, that's the thing that we are talking about. And the other aspect is that marathon running is so big now among, among commoners that there is, so breaking a nine second barrier in 100 meters, it's, uh, yeah, great, but we don't identify with it. Yeah, because so, we, yeah, yeah. we, I mean, yeah, lot of people, most people most will people not be sprinters. Sprinters, yeah. yeah. But runners, they know, that's why the celebration, that's why the, the, the understanding that this is huge because, 
uh, we also run marathon and mm. uh, people target four hours, people target five hours, people mm. target three hours. Yeah. So amateur runners, I'm talking amateur, about. And yeah. So, yeah, and you could tell from the sort of public support that was out there along yeah. this course in Vienna, some places 15, 16 people deep. Yeah. I mean, and this guy, is, despite the fact that he's surrounded by a team of uh, pacers yeah, that's yeah. essentially blocking him off, there are still people 15 deep trying to get a glimpse of him. So, I, I, I saw kids running thing, on know? the side trying yeah, to stay to with them. Yeah, match his pace. It's, it's uh, ridiculous. And also, thing. the crowd was important because he realized it in the previous attempt in Monza, which was at the racetrack, and uh, it was completely cordoned off. Things were silent. And Kipchoge is a kind of runner who who lifts himself up with with crowd support mm. and crowd noise mm. and all that so he was very he was insisting that i need i need crowd i need crowd. presence there fair so. enough fair enough so for at least for today a, a moment for yeah. everyone to sort of celebrate and uh, that about wraps it up for i think this part for more on this and for all of newsclick sports coverage you can head to uh, www.newsclick.in also please do uh, subscribe and like our facebook and youtube pages and follow us on Instagram. Thanks for watching.